Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement, a channel devoted to sharing the craft of repairing, restoring, and modifying vintage electronic gear and other random stuff. Welcome back to Mr. Brown's Basement. Today we're going to look at the clock, either fixing it, getting parts for it, trashing it, who knows. I found another donor, we're going to get to that in just a moment. So just to bring you up to speed, there's a whole section of this that's missing. And that just doesn't look right, and I'm not going to put the TV back together like that. We have this switch unit over here. This switch over here is for um, the timer, and this one over here is for the buzzer. On the back, we have a 110 volt motor, 60 hertz, and not two, which I originally thought, but three micro switches. This top one over here controls the output plug when the sleep timer is going. This one over here controls the plug when the alarm goes off. And this one down here controls the buzzer, uh, the buzzer, when the alarm goes off. So three micro switches run this clock. Incidentally, this is a Copal GG1613 mechanism. And no, I couldn't find one on eBay. Here's the donor clock. It's a genuine Kuwait Insurance Company clock, and it runs on 220. Or it doesn't. The, the person who sold it to me told me it doesn't work. You already know the old mechanism. Meet the new mechanism. Very, very similar. Exactly the same dimensions. But there are a few interesting differences. This is the old one. It has three micro switches on it. One is for the buzzer and two are for the plug. The top one is activated by the countdown timer mechanism, while the bottom two are simultaneously activated by the alarm mechanism. This one only has two micro switches, and that's because it doesn't have a buzzer. What it has is a radio, and the radio just needs to be turned on and off. Just like the other one, the top micro switch is operated by the timer mechanism, and the bottom one is activated by the alarm mechanism. I may have to lose some functionality. I haven't decided yet. This motor, the original, is 120 volts, 60 hertz. This one, as you can see, is 10 volts AC, 50 hertz. I can't use the motor, but I may be able to transplant and lubricate at the same time that motor into here. It looks very similar in terms of mounting. See what I'm going to have to do to make this one fit. The motor and neon lamp are wired directly across the line. There is no fuse. The power continues to the timer switch. When the timer switch is set to on mode, the circuit to the receptacle is completed when the sleep timer is timing via the top micro switch. When the timer switch is set to auto mode, the circuit to the receptacle is completed when the sleep timer has timed out. The circuit for the receptacle can also be completed when the timer switch is set to auto mode if the middle micro switch has been activated by the alarm mechanism. Finally, the buzzer circuit is only completed when the timer switch is in auto mode, the alarm switch is on, and the alarm mechanism has activated the bottom micro switch. Well, guess what? I am mistaken. This radio does have a buzzer for the alarm, but it's the cheapest buzzer you could ever imagine. So what I've done is I've connected power, 12 volts almost, AC over here, which is what it wants. It actually wants 10, but it's going to get 9. And this extra conductor over here, I'm going to connect that other conductor up to the 12 volts AC, and I will get the alarm sound. It's getting its alarm from overloading the amplifier with uh, 50 hertz, or in this case, 60 hertz hum. It works. Not very uh, elegant, but it works. 
I've moved the motor off the new mechanism and I'm thinking now that it might be easier just to transplant not just the motor but also the switches as well because the mounting of the switches is actually very similar. So we've got one over here and one over there when, when in fact it would be better to have one over here and two over here. So just unscrew these screws and move everything over and that will probably give me a working mechanism. But first I think I'm going to get some fine lubricant and make sure that all the gears are running smoothly. There's no point in having a new motor in when it's experiencing too much resistance. This is the uh, oil that I usually use for lubricating clocks. It's got a long applicator and I can get it in exactly where I need it. So I just want to get it in where there's going to be friction and certainly not overdo it. Here we have the switches from the original set in the new, uh, the new clock unit. And it's almost like they're conjoined twins. But the next step will be to get the motor on. Don't forget to use the lock washers on the, uh, on the screws and the spacing washers that keep the switches exactly where they're supposed to be. Here's the motor powered up. I haven't done anything with the motor yet. That is the 120 volt 60 hertz motor. Now at the back is the rotor and I might be able to lubricate a little bit in there. But the front part is a sealed unit which gears down this high speed to, I guess, about 1 RPM. There's not much I can do except perhaps lubricate the spindle where the gear is. It wasn't sounding too good at first, but now, after putting some lubricant in, it's going much more smoothly and much more quiet. So I guess the bearings must have been really dry. I've got the new motor in the clock and it's actually flipping, which is wonderful news. But the neon bulb is not glowing at all. Now, neon bulbs don't glow very often, but they do. Or it could be the resistor. Either way, it needs a new light. I could put on in a neon bulb, or I could, I suppose, replace it with an LED with a large resistor and a diode, but that's way too much work. So it's going to get a neon bulb, maybe even the old one with a different resistor. I'll splice in the neon bulb from the new unit, and I'm going to replace the power cord. I've seen worse, but it's not in great condition, and for the price of a power cord, it's worth it. And of course, I need to resolder. Where is it? I got to resolder that because that's a mess. In case you haven't seen strain releases like this before, all you do is you squeeze it with a pair of pliers and it will come out, and then you can put in the new cord. The original plug is a non polarized plug, in other words, it has blades that are exactly the same, so you could put them into the outlet either way. New ones have blades of different sizes, so you've got a slightly larger one and a slightly smaller one. The smaller one is live or hot, and generally speaking it's good practice to route the live through switches and the neutral, or the larger one, through what is not switched or fused. Now the clock unit is completely back together and I don't have the correct knob for the front but this will have to do. This was pirated from the donor clock, the second donor clock, but I'll find something better at some point in the future. Uh, 
wires have been connected and covered with heat shrink so there's no chance of something going awry and now it's just a matter of testing it I've applied power and I can hear the motor running and it's just a matter of waiting until it flips I'm going to turn out the light to see how the neon bulb looks Yeah, there's a glow. There you go, it flipped. Let's see if we can advance it to the alarm. Yeah, the alarm works. It's just a matter of testing the powered outlet, which I will do in a moment, not yet. I'm back. What I've done is I've put a load in to pretend it's the TV, and I've got the clock set on auto. I'm going to advance the, uh, the alarm setting so that right now it's nine o'clock i'm going to set it to, to 11 o'clock roughly and hopefully it will turn on the bulb when i reach 11 o'clock eleven p.m Yeah, I think it works. To make it easier to manage, I've just reattached the base with two of the six screws, and uh, I'll do what I want to do on the chassis, which is replace this power cord and check the voltage, the B-plus voltage, which should be about 12 volts, and uh, then I can reassemble it, and uh, I will have to take off the base to get to put back these two screws, but that's okay. I've taken out those two screws so it will be easier to work on the power cord. One little slip of the screwdriver or the, the pliers and you could knock off the end of the CRT, which would be a very unfortunate and very expensive mistake. To adjust the B plus voltage, I'm picking it off from a convenient place, which is on the tuner and it should be 10.81 volts if everything is good and it is 10.97 so just a little bit off the adjustment for it is right over there in the middle of the signal board I mentioned before that the name of the prior owner is still in the case yeah right there I'm going to use this grinding tool I'm using a rounded stone at the end and I'm going to be very very gentle with it. What the stone actually does is it uh, softens the plastic and as long as you keep the tool moving so it doesn't gouge the surface you'll get pretty good results. With it tidied up the next thing is to get all the parts back into the cabinet like the antenna and the handle and so on. I think it's together and it's working, except I'm getting some noise from my lighting fixture. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, actually a much better picture than you see through the camera. There is one problem though, and that has something to do with the polarized outlets that I bought. You can't buy unpolarized outlets now. They won't fit into the receptacle at the back of the base and that's sort of a nuisance but I can make an adapter so that it will fit. You said their headpiece only had markings on one side. You absolutely sure? Bell on staff is too long. They're digging you go wrong. Well I think it's finished for now. 
I do need to get another knob for the front and I need to make an adapter for the back. And there seems to be an intermittent issue with the clock. It sometimes won't start, which probably means it's dirty, most likely the motor. So I'll take a look at that at some point in the future. But for now, I think I'm going to put this one to bed and hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if it deserves a thumbs up and uh, maybe even subscribe. Anyway, thank you again for watching. That's all for now.